As you can see here, I've made a tier list with five categories. Hype AF, Nice Edition, Cool But Not Hype, Meh, and Why? So, without further ado, let's just go in order of uh, ranking all of the uh, Smash Fighters. First off is Joker. So first off, Joker from Persona 5. Uh, they were announced as the first DLC. They were announced on uh, December 5th, in fact, the day the game came out. At the uh, Game Awards for that year. It's definitely a surprise. Nobody, uh, I think anyone, even Persona 5 fans, expected a uh, Persona 5 character to get into Smash for the DLC. So it was definitely surprising to see Joker in the game. Uh, I remember the year he got announced was um, I was just sitting in class, I was still in high school at the time. I was sitting uh, in my class waiting for school to start and then my friend just burst through the room and just like, Joker is in Smash! And I was I was just, I was still half asleep because it was 8.30 in the morning and I was just like, huh? What? Huh? Also, I didn't know what the Game Awards were back then so I wasn't watching it live, I didn't even know what they were. So, uh, the Joker announcement just flew completely over my head. I was just caught off guard and my friend showed me the trailer and I was freaking out. Yeah, as, of course, as you guys know, Persona 5 is one of my favorite games ever, so just having the main character from that in Smash is something I really like, and he's actually one of my mains, in fact. So you can tell this was definitely a worthy addition, in my opinion. So because of it being such a reveal that I liked a lot, I'm going to be putting Joker in hype AF because I was hype as fuck when this thing came out. So yeah, that's our first one. Joker is going in the Hype AF category. Second on the list was Hero. Hero was announced at Nintendo's E3 of 2018. Uh, they announced two characters during the E3. They opened with Smash and ended with Smash, and uh, Hero was their opener. Uh, I played Dragon Quest XI. It's okay, it's a neat game, but uh, I, I, it was okay. It wasn't anything way too special. It's a very traditional JRPG. But uh, yeah, there's something about... Dragon Quest uh, 11 that just didn't grab me for some reason. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just how traditional it was. Maybe it was the story. I don't know what it was, but didn't grab me. And then I met a certain enemy that terrified the shit out of me, so I didn't want to see any more of them, so I stopped playing the game. Uh, I'm a wuss, I know, but uh, that's this, that's my story behind Dragon Quest uh, 11. But uh, even with some Dragon Quest knowledge, I'm still not, like, hype about Hero being in the game. So yeah, that's that's my opinion on Hero, just being in the game. It's cool that they put the other Dragon Quest protagonists in, but even then it doesn't really save it, because I don't know any, any other Dragon Quest other than Eleven. So with that, I'm putting Hero in the meh category, because he is just kind of meh for me. Not bad, just not great either. Alright, next up is Banjo and Kazooie. Uh, they were the second character announced at Nintendo's uh, 2018 E3 reveal. And wow, oh my god. People wanted Banjo. People really wanted Banjo. He's been requested since Melee. And that's because uh, Rare used to make games for the N64. And they also made uh, the Donkey Kong Country games, like all the way back. So to get one of their characters in the game, I felt was very fitting just considering their relationship with Nintendo, even though they're owned by Microsoft now. And especially adding to that, that like Banjo is one of the most requested characters since Melee. So I feel like he definitely deserved a spot for the old school N64 fans. Uh, I was excited for them. I wouldn't say I was excited for myself. I was like, yeah, it's really cool that they got in. But uh, I wasn't exactly hyped for them because I have no real history of Banjo-Kazooie. I'm going to try it, of course, when N64 Online comes out. But... As of right now, I'm not right too hyped for them. I've seen footage and stuff of Banjo Kazooie games. They seem neat. They seem like a nice little collectathon, but it's nothing I was extremely hyped for because I didn't grow up playing it. That's why I'm gonna put Banjo in the. I'll go into cool but not hype because I wasn't exactly screaming with joy about them. I thought it was cool though he got in, but I wasn't exactly you know was getting. Oh my god, yeah, Banjo's in the game. Next we have Terry from Fatal Fury. Uh, this is a game I have never even heard of before Smash, uh, but it is apparently a fighting game on a, con on a console called the Neo Geo that was around the same time as the SNES. Yeah, I never heard of Fatal Fury before, so I was never really sure what to think of it. Because uh, I'd, I'd never heard of it. I had no experience with this, this like 
system or console or a game before. So, yeah, I was just completely taken by surprise. With that, though, I feel Terry is going to go in the mech category because I just don't know who he is. I know nothing about them. Alright, next up we have Byleth from Fire Emblem Tree Houses. Uh, this one's going to be a bit controversial uh, because, as some of you may know, I'm a really big fan of Fire Emblem, so I was actually honestly full-heartedly expecting this. As the last DLC, no, definitely not. I don't think anyone expected that, but as a fighter, I did expect Byleth to get in eventually, so I wasn't completely heartbroken by their response, and also I'm a Fire Emblem fan, so I was actually secretly on the inside kind of happy about it, but I do understand where all the hate came from. We do have way too many Fire Emblem characters, like, on the roster, so adding a number one was... A number, wow. Sean, learn how to speak. So adding another one definitely isn't what a lot of Smash fans wanted. That's why... I was personally happy about Byleth because I was a Fire Emblem fan, but I understand where all the complaints came from. With that being said though, I was pretty happy with uh, Byleth's announcement. So that's why I'm going to be putting Byleth into the nice addition section, because I was happy about their inclusion, but I understand why a lot of Smash fans were very angry at the inclusion of Byleth. That's all of Fighter Pass 1. Now we're going to move on to the Fighter Pass 2 fighters, and we're going to kick that off with uh, the first Fighter Pass 2 fighter, Min Min. Min Min is a very interesting case because uh, the way Min Min worked was that they announced that it would be an arms fighter and then at a later date they announced specifically who that fighter would be but up until the release there were two fighters everyone was expecting. They were expecting uh, Min Min or Ninjara, that's his name. It was, it was Min Min or Ninjara and I was personally hoping for Ninjara to get in but uh, unfortunately that was not the case. We got Min Min. Uh, I'd never played ARMS, I knew what it was, because I was, at that point in time, I was watching every Nintendo Direct when they came out, so when we saw him, when I saw Min Min, I wasn't exactly overjoyed, because I hadn't played ARMS, and it's just a kind of okay game, it's not, not bad, of course not, but it's, it's not a great game either, so when I saw Min Min, I was kind of like, okay, yeah, cool, it's glad you're here, I guess, but I, I can't really say I'm excited to have you here, so that's where I kind of lie on Min Min. So I'm going to put Min Min in the- I was originally going to put her in the cool not hype category but put her in the meh category because like, that's kind of what it is, it's just kind of meh. There's nothing really exciting about Min Min's inclusion. Okay, next on Fighter Pass 2 we have Steve, and for Steve I actually do have a reaction up on the channel so if you want to go check it out I'll leave it in the description. But uh, yeah, nobody expected this one. Nobody expected Steve from Minecraft to get in, but I think it was definitely a really hype addition to put into the game because Minecraft is, without a doubt, the biggest game around right now, especially with just the resurgence it had lately. Minecraft is definitely the biggest game we have ever, so it's on everything, actually, as well. So I figured it's just only a matter of time before Steve got in, so I'm, I'm really happy Sakurai got him in, and I think Steve is definitely a worthy addition to actually have in Smash. Where I put Steve, I'm gonna put, gonna put Steve in the hype AF category because I actually do think the Steve announcement was pretty hype and I actually got really excited when I saw the Steve announcement. Like I said, reaction on the channel, go check it out if you want. Now, this next one, oh boy, this next one. Freaking Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. So, uh, when the Game Awards happened, this is the Game Awards 2019 now. Wait, no, 2020 actually. Uh, 2020? Yeah, 2020. Gosh, I'm losing count of the years because we've been stuck in quarantine for so long. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Game Over 29. No, shit, I've forgotten again. 2020. 2020. So Game Over 2020 roll around, and I know I knew there was a Smash Fighter coming because Nintendo sent out a tweet just before the Game Awards happened. I was gonna watch it anyway just because, and uh, the tweet just solidified. Okay, now I need to get get ready at any moment to record reactions. And that's what I did. I saw the I saw the like smash like uh, the, like the cutting of the logo, and then I'm just like, okay, quick, we gotta switch over, we gotta change scenes. Uh, like this is gonna be someone big, and oh boy, was it big! We got Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. Now, uh, Sephiroth is the villain of Final Fantasy VII. I don't know if you know, but uh, when the Game Awards were happening, I was uh, in the middle of a Final Fantasy VII remake let's play because I did still the let's plays back at the time, and I was let's playing Final Fantasy VII remake. And oh boy, the fact that I was playing through Final Fantasy VII Remake just knew who Sephiroth was because of how big he is. 
and to see just Sephiroth arrive in the game, just the way he did as well, that was like, whoa, whoa. Also, I do have a reaction for Sephiroth up on the channel as well, so definitely go check that out if you want to. So, for Sephiroth, there's no question, of course Sephiroth's going into high bay F category. Where else could I put Sephiroth? Sephiroth, high bay F category, Sephiroth was a hyper field. Okay, moving on. Next up, we have Pyra and Mithra. Uh, like all the other Fighter Pass 2 fighters, I have a reaction of the Pyra and Mithra trailer. Actually, the Nintendo Direct they were announcing in general, I have a whole reaction for that up on the channel. I don't have a separate one for Pyra and Mithra, but uh, Pyra and Mithra was the first announcement of the Smash Direct. So, sorry, not the Nintendo Direct. So if you do go to the uh, correct Nintendo Direct, uh, you'll, you can just watch the first announcement. That's what, that's what it is. So, Pyra Mithra, I have no knowledge of Xenoblade, so I can't say I was, you know, really overly excited, because, like, I didn't know who they were, because I hadn't played Xenoblade 2 yet, but I knew that Xenoblade's kind of under underappreciated, it has one fighter and it has uh, one stage, and then just the music tracks that came with it in Smash 4, so I was fine with it getting another fighter and stage. Uh, and Pyra and Mithra is actually a pretty cool fighter because they're two in one. Uh, when you press uh, down B, I'm pretty sure you uh, switch over from Pyra to Mithra and vice versa. So it's very cool how they each have their own moveset and uh, like own stats to them. I think it's very neat. And the stage is a nice design as well. I I like it. I like that it's actually a living being. So uh, for Pyra and Mithra, uh, I'm gonna put up, also I just use Pyra for the whole the whole one image. I'm gonna put them in a nice addition because I honestly do think they're a nice addition. I actually did get a little excited when uh, they were first announced, but uh, yeah, nothing to make me go crazy about it. Okay, next up on the uh, Fighter Pass 2 side is Kazuya from Tekken. I never played a Tekken game, so I had no idea who this guy was, but I had a feeling if they were gonna show him off at E3, uh, being the Smash Fighter reveal for this year's E3 2021. Uh, he was it had to be somewhat big, and I, I knew he was from Tekken, I could tell that much, but I'd never played a Tekken game, so I didn't really know how important he was. I did watch reactions from people who knew who he was, so I, I'm happy that like people were excited for him. I'm definitely happy that people were excited for him, but uh, just personally for me, I wasn't that excited not knowing who he was. So uh, for me, I'm going to put Kazuya over in the meh category, because I just didn't know who he was. Okay, this final one, this final character. Come on, guys. I'm wearing Sora's freaking necklace right now. How could I not be hyped for Sora getting in Smash? It's freaking Sora! So yes, a few days ago, Sora's reveal happened. I yelled like a little baby. Go watch the reaction, please. Go do it. You will not be disappointed. Everyone who's watched my reaction said they loved it. It's amazing. I actually made people who had never even heard of Sora or Kingdom Hearts or had very little experience to Kingdom Hearts actually excited for Sora. I had people come and tell me, yo, like, I didn't know who this guy was before, but like you made me really excited for him or like I knew very little about Kingdom Hearts, but I'm really happy for you. So that's, it makes me proud that I've made people excited for Sora. So, and of course, I'm excited for Sora. Kingdom Hearts is one of my favorite series ever. I love Kingdom Hearts so much. And the fact that Sora is getting in. Sora was my most wanted ever since Joker was announced back at the very beginning. And we finally got him. We finally got him. Don't let anyone tell you Sora can't be in Smash. Because Sora can totally be in Smash. Because look at him, he's here now. And that is my tier list for the Smash DLC. We have Joker, Steve, Sephiroth, and Sora in the Hype AF category. Byleth and Pyra in the Nice Edition. Banjo-Kazooie in the Cool But Not Hype. And then Hero, Terry, Min Min, and Kazuya in the mech category. No one and why, because I was never really outraged at any inclusion. Just some I didn't fully understand, but... Well, not fully didn't understand, just wasn't really hyped for. Anyway, this is just a quick video to show you guys the Smash DLC and how I felt about all of them. Thank you guys for coming and checking me out just for this quick highlight video. And I'll see you all next time. Peace out.